Hello everyone. My name is Andy Dixon and some people might say that I'm an ex-con with convictions. And I'm also a singer and songwriter out of Nashville, Tennessee. And what I'd like to talk with you about today is just some things that are going on and see if these things resonate with you. Um, when I was young, I was raised into a family where crime was seen as normal. It was seen to be a normal thing. And um, when you grow up in a family like that, uh, it's natural. There's nothing that's unnatural about it. Much like, you know, if you had a lawyer for a father or an undertaker, you might grow up and find yourself in that business. And all through my youth, school teachers and other folks, would, they would be quick to tell me when I was misbehaving that, uh, you know what, you're going to wind up just like your dad. You're going to go to prison. And they were right. I did. I wound up in prison. I did 27 years in state penitentiary serving a life sentence without parole. Life without parole. What does that mean? I mean, if you think about that for a minute, life without parole, that means that you have received a terminal sentence. That's a sentence that will never end. That's a sentence that stretches on far after you have left this earth and have died. It just goes on and on and on like an endless train running nowhere. Like a waterfall that falls and no one hears it. No one hears the splash. No one hears the water. Noise signified by nothing no one's there to hear it. And that's kind of like where our children are today in this country. There's 1.7 million children across America that have parents in prison. Are we going to allow them to be unheard, noises unheard, signified by nothing? I don't think so. I think we can do better. I think as a nation, we can do a lot better. Prison is a brutal, cold, barren wasteland. It's bad on the people that are serving time there, and it's just as bad on those who wear the badges and wield the billy clubs and wear the protective gear. It's psychological damage that's almost irreparable. I have an English teacher right now somewhere in America who's doing backflips. But like I said, if I'd only been a better student, then maybe my life would have turned out different also. But what we would really like to do is break some of these kids out of jail before they get there. That chain from my leg Don't drag me to the ground Take that manacle off my leg Boy, don't drag me to the ground We're gonna break out of this place We're gonna find ourselves in Place to hide. We're gonna break out of this jail tonight. If it's the last thing we ever do, we're 
gonna break out of this jail tonight If it's the last thing we ever do So we're going to try to get these kids. We're going to try to get them on a road that leads them to a place where they can complete school. And hopefully someday even go to college. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine me Walking hand in hand there Can you imagine me there Walking hand in hand there I just want to be like you I don't want to end up in jail I just want to be like you, I don't want to end up there. So what are we going to do? I guess that's the best question of all. I guess we could lobby our senators and legislators. Or maybe we could just all rally around each other for a good cause. You know, there was a time when I thought I would never see the outside world again. not for the Supreme Court's unanimous decision that said I had an illegal sentence, I guess I'd still be in the pen. And through a life of pure intention, sometimes we can wind up in a place that no one else could see for us, but we can only see for ourselves. One thing I know for sure is that people want to help other people. And I know deep down inside, everybody that hears this message about intergenerational incarceration would want to just get up off that couch, throw a little time and effort in, and try to strike out an awareness about what's going on. Because before you can stop a problem, you have to admit and know that that problem exists. And I'm here to tell you today, that problem does exist because I am a child of generational incarceration. I was born my father's son back in 1951. I learned to do the things I did by watching the man I love, by watching the man above. I watched him good, I watched him close. I liked the way he moved and I liked the way he rode. I thought that there could be nothing better in this world than to grow up and be just like him. That's all I ever wanted. It's all I ever needed. It's all I ever wanted to do. It's all I looked forward to. And then one day the lights came flashing down on And just like generations before me, 
Tell somebody how hard it really is. Man, I don't know. I guess if you really want to know, maybe you could lock yourself up in your bathroom and put a mattress on the floor. Have somebody in the house to knock on your door two times a day and give you a small portion of food. And let you live in that bathroom for a year. Well, you could never do that unless you were forced to. Try it for just 24 hours. <laughs> See how that feels. Just 24 hours and then you'll know how I feel. You'll know how I feel. Stuck in. You know, educators, people that have a hand on technology, listen up. In this day that we live in, if you don't have a technological advantage, you're in pretty bad shape. We got kids right here in America that have parents in prison and they don't even have a laptop computer. And if they had one, somebody in their family would probably steal it from them. So that's why it's important to have a place where these kids can go and have a laptop computer that they can call their own right there. And they can leave that computer there and they don't have to worry about somebody coming in and stealing it. They know that when they come back at the end of the day, that computer's still going to be there waiting on them. Because we're going to put their name on it. It's going to belong to them. And nobody in the hood's going to take it away. And these kids will get a technological advantage. Well, heck, man, we know people in 24 hours can hold a design-a-thon and teach these kids to create businesses that only you and I can imagine. I know that's the truth. I've seen it done. I've seen what happens when a bunch of geeks for good and a bunch of computer-savvy people throw their spirits together, unite in love, and go out and complete a challenge and what it can turn out and what it can turn into and what it can be and all that kind of stuff just makes you feel Makes you want to spread that love around. You know it makes you feel right. It makes you want to spread some love around tonight. Let the children know you care. Hold them tight to your bosom tonight. And let them know. All you got to do is let them know we're there. That's all it takes. Let them know we're in their corner. Let them know we support them. And reach out and support organizations that help these kids. There's some out there. And you can help. You can help keep a kid from entering until the only thing that I know of that's probably compared to hell, and that's prison. Don't let these kids cross over that threshold, please. You'll be glad you didn't.